All right, we're going to spend a few minutes today looking at problems which let us apply our knowledge of right triangle trigonometry in some real world settings. First, we're going to need to define a few new terms. In the figure, notice that we have three people, observers, standing at various heights. We have one here on the ground, one at the top of an observation deck, and a third at the balcony of a rooftop restaurant. In each case, we see that there are three sets of dashed lines parallel to the ground and at the observer's eye line. If the observer looks upward, as shown with the lines highlighted red, we refer to the angle relative to the eye line as an angle of elevation. Within the figure, that will be the angles marked 4 and 2. If the observer instead looks downward, as shown with the lines highlighted blue, we refer to the angle relative to the eye line as an angle of depression. Within the figure, those angles are marked 1 and 3. Let's put these ideas to use. A reverse bungee ride is similar to the bungee and trampoline ride at Mall of Georgia. A person is launched into the air by releasing the tension in stretched elastic cords which are tethered to the rider by a harness. In this particular example, Reagan stands halfway between the two posts containing the elastic cords. The points of attachment create a sort of vertex and the cords themselves form an angle of elevation of 70 degrees. The question asks us to find the height of the vertical posts themselves. We'll want to make a note of a few things in our figure. First, notice that the posts are situated on a stand that is one meter tall, so we don't want to forget about that. Next, we see that the rider is halfway between the two poles, which themselves are eight feet apart. That means that we have two congruent four foot sections on each side of the rider. Let's make a quick triangle sketch of the situation off to the side. It looks like we're given the base, which is 4, the angle adjacent to that base, which is 70 degrees, and we're solving for the height, which is the opposite side, and we'll call it x. We'll need to use the tangent function here. We'll set this up as tangent of 70 degrees equals x over 4. To solve for x, multiply both sides of the equation by 4. Now we'll use our calculator. We get approximately 10.99 meters, which we'll say is 11 meters. The posts themselves are 12 meters off the ground because the stand is shown to be 1 meter tall. Let's look at a different one. We have a home security camera on the side of a house here, and we want to position the camera so that we can track down this gopher who's been destroying the Dunwoody family's garden. We want to tilt the camera downward to see the ground so that we're solving for the angle of depression. Since the eye line of the camera is parallel to the ground, we have an old friend hiding here. Did you spot the alternate interior angle? The angle of depression is equal to the acute base angle of this triangle. Now we can use trigonometry to solve here. We have the side opposite the acute angle, and we have the hypothesis. So we'll use sine. To set it up, we have sine of x degrees equals 6 over 12, which simplifies to 1 half. Since we're solving for the angle here, we'll need to use the inverse sine function. That will be x equals the inverse sine of 1 half. That's a 30 degree angle. Since angle x is congruent to the angle of depression, the camera should be tilted downward at 30 degrees to spot the gopher. In the next one, it says you spot your bus from a top floor window in your house, and before you run out the door, you idly wonder how far away from your doorstep that bus stop is. Let's find out. We know the height directly from the ground up to your window. That's 18 feet. We also know that you're gazing down at the street at a 23 degree angle of depression relative to your eye line. Again, our eye line makes a parallel line with the ground. Our old angle pair relationships come in handy here. The angle of depression is congruent to this ground angle by alternate interior angles. So we've got the side opposite that angle and we're interested in the distance from the bus to the house. So that's the side adjacent to our known angle. We should use the tangent function here. We'll set this up as tangent of 23 degrees equals 18 over x, which is our missing side. Next, we'll multiply both sides of the equation by x and divide both sides of the equation by tangent of 23 degrees. We have x equals 18 over tangent of 23 degrees. We have x equals about 42.4 feet. Next, we head to Disney World where our friend Marcus plans to record a quick video for his snap story. He tilts the camera up 38 degrees while holding it 4 feet in the air. He sees from the visitor guide that the Cinderella castle is 183 feet tall. The question is, how far away from the castle is he? Well, we have the acute base angle of the right triangle and we have the height of the castle, but we're going to need to subtract 4 feet from its height to account for Marcos holding his camera up in the air. So we'll label the height of the triangle in the figure 179 feet. We're solving for the side adjacent to this acute base angle, so we'll use tangent, which relates the opposite in the adjacent sides. We'll set this up as tangent of 38 degrees equals 179 over x. Again, we multiply both sides of the equation by x and divide both sides by tangent of 38 degrees. We have x equals 179 over tangent of 38 degrees, so that's about 229 feet. 
Next, we head to the Hogwarts grounds where Scabbers is escaping from Hermione's cat, Crookshanks. He's going to seek refuge under the Whomping Willow here, but before doing so, he pauses 20 feet away to admire the magical tree. He looks up to the top of the tree, tilting his head at a 64 degree angle, and wonders how tall it is. We can answer that question with the tangent function. The height of the tree is the side opposite Scabbers' angle of elevation, which is 64 degrees. And we are given the distance between him and the tree, that's 20 feet. We set this up as tangent of 64 degrees equals the height over 20. To solve for the height, just multiply both sides of the equation by 20. We have the height equals tangent of 64 degrees times 20, and it looks like the Whomping Willow is about 41 feet tall. Last, we are looking at a communications link between an antenna on the Earth's ground and the International Space Station. The ISS is in low Earth orbit, meaning it is typically about 400 kilometers above the ground. That's about 250 miles above ground. The signal from the antenna is guided by software and human engineers, but pointing errors still do occur, and they're very costly. The antenna is set with a 0.01 degree error off of a direct line to the space station. Here on Earth, that's practically nothing, one one hundredth of one degree. But over a long distance, that causes the signal to veer far away from the space station. We want to find out how far off that communication line is going to be. Go ahead and label the angle, 0 0.01 degrees, and the distance between the antenna and the space station. That's 400 kilometers. We want to find out how far off the signal will be, so when it reaches space, it's going to strike at this vertex, not the target itself. So we're solving for the height of this right triangle in the figure. We'll use tangent of 0 0.01 degrees equals the distance over 400. To solve for the distance, multiply both sides of the equation by 400. We get the distance equals tangent of 0 0.01 degrees times 400. That gives a distance of about 0 0.069 kilometers. That's the same as 69.8 meters. This may not seem like a big deal, but the station itself is said to be only 108 meters long and 73 meters wide. So the communication is going to miss by a width practically as wide as the station itself. That's quite a lot. This also demonstrates that rounding errors can really be critical, particularly in engineering applications. 